why should you use an interactive atlas? An interactive atlas helps to highlight your work to a wider audience. And there are a range of visualization tools available for that, which we will discuss directly afterwards. Um, our goal is to showcase the relevance of your work in an appealing way and show how data from the Climate Data Store is being used in that process. Uh, a first one is uh, an interactive map. So um, there are a couple uh, of, of interactive maps in this example. Uh, we start here with an animation of maps, uh, which is specifically useful for mapping temporal aspects, in this case months. But it could also be year periods, for example. Uh, this could be an interactive GIF or a, a movie set on repeat. As another flavor, we also have a, a climate lens, as we call it. This allows you to combine two maps. One map on the background, in this case showing reference climate, and one map in the lens. In this case, showing climate change in the 2050s under RCP 8.5. You can zoom in on these maps and explore the differences under climate change. This tool is a powerful way to show differences between maps. A limitation, of course, is the amount of maps, as you can only compare two maps. So another uh, tool that we have available is uh, the interactive graph. Uh, this gives an example of an interactive graph with a first draft for Heineken. And it provides an overview with a couple of sections. So we have a, a graph section, uh, a map section, uh, selectable climate indicators and room for text. You will see that the graph section is the, uh, the bigger chunk. Uh, so it, it's, the, it's the most important part. It is a clickable document where you can select uh, climate indicators already in this version. However, also uh, the, the other parts can be made interactive, giving, for example, the ability to switch between locations on the map, showing graphs for those locations, and developing buttons for the graphs to switch between RCPs or different year periods uh, of interest. In the graph, we could highlight hard thresholds like we do here. Uh, for this example, a value where the crop a hop uh, could die. Um, so we have room to, to, to show these specific uh, uh, thresholds. The interactive graph is particularly useful for cases with high temporal diversity and limited spatial variety. Also in cases where it is important to, to stress and highlight uncertainty bandwidths, it could be useful. Uh, as in maps, it is often more difficult to show uncertainties uh, like this. And the map introduction is suitable for providing rich context to your story. It's not as interactive as the other examples, where you can zoom in and make interactive combinations. Uh, in a map introduction, you navigate step by step through a story by scrolling down. It offers the combination of text and map information. And it basically is a, a slideshow of, of images. This does give more room for a specific graphic design. Uh, the example we see here was made by using only open global data that's readily available. And we could add specific information from, from your case to that. And it is specifically helpful for a quick and clear introduction of the case and the location, the spatial elements to a wider audience. The next tool is the map dashboard. And this dashboard shows a map on one side and shows infographs on the other side. And the infographs give statistics for the current visible map extent. So if you move the map, the statistics will be recalculated for the new visible area. These statistics show examples 
of the average maximum temperature in March in this case, with the left bar for current climate and uh, the right bar for 2050s under RCP 8.5. And if you would want to show more scenarios or years as extra bars, for example, that would be possible. The figure on the right side in this case gives the maximum pixel value for the current zoom extent. And for your case, we could use infographs like these to highlight statistics uh, that are of interest for your region. So this could be maximum, averages, minima, or other uh, spatial filters. This tool is specifically helpful when spatial diversity for the region is large. And if there are multiple scenarios or years you need to show.